today I'm getting the Chinese letters for 8, 9, 6, 4, um, and that's representing the Tiananmen Square massacre that happened 24 years ago in 1989. So um, 1989 was the year that I was born, so I'm also 24 now. And um, the, there was this really famous photo taken today, 24 years ago, after the, the protest um, of a man standing up to these four tanks. And I remember when I was in sixth grade, uh, I was doing a project on like Chinese history for my social studies class, and I had never before encountered something that um, really completely changed the way that I thought, um, like that image did. And when I saw that, I was, you know, just like a, a preteen, like a small kid, and seeing this image really made me sort of like question the validity of government at all if this is what it can do to people and um, I had never really thought about that before and I had never thought about what would it be like to be in a situation where it, it was just you against that kind of authority um, and so today I wanted to get this tattoo of the numbers as kind of like a subtle reminder of this event. Um, I picked this place because I, I like that I can keep it like really close to me. Like I have one tattoo on my hand, but it's always extending out towards other people and doing things. And here it's a little bit closer, a little bit more like kept quiet. And I like to just keep it to myself that way. I think Tiananmen Square is connected to Tibet um, in, in a lot of ways, like the kind of most obvious first way being that in, in an aspiration for democracy, it's going to, to have that be not only an idea that people harbor in their hearts, but something that they're willing to risk their lives for, to be out in the street for, to be publicly visible, you know, risking their families, risking their futures. Um, that's something that definitely happened as part of this, this movement in 1989 and I think that Tibetans now in the past two years with the self immolations have been um, really making that call very strongly that they're willing to risk everything, even their own future, to be able to have the kind of, um, the kind of rights and the kind of government, the kind of um, opportunities that they want to have for themselves and the ability to determine that for themselves. like the the greatest ideal of democracy, even if in practice it becomes corrupt or people lose sight of what it is to be a citizen, the, the biggest ideal is that, you know, through, through participation, through active participation, you have a voice that can make a difference. And when people come together in that way, it's, it's really impressive, it's really amazing. And so in, in getting this Tiananmen Square tattoo, sort of thinking about it in a Tibetan context, I would really like to see people being able to come together in a strategic, nonviolent way, um, and who knows how the government will react, but I think that there's definitely a strong connection between the aspiration for one's voice to be heard and being willing to risk everything for that, that connects Tibetans and Chinese who are hoping for democracy in China. I never heard, you know, Tiananmen Square happened until I come to India, mm -hmm. and I know that lots of people don't know it, and they maybe still in, in in Tibet also maybe don't know, and uh, I know some, you know, the student in Tiananmen Square and after they could escape other country, this kind of things. But do you think, uh, any any Chinese like um, now, uh, they try to ignore it or they couldn't, you know? talk about this or um, or like a Chinese government to pressure on and make a, you know never talk about these things yeah. what do you think still with the bigger reason um, I, I've been reading a couple articles that were talking about how through social media younger generations of Chinese were able to learn about things that had happened in the past that had been censored from their school books that their parents wouldn't talk about. Um, that they weren't able to find access, you know, weren't able to access information on due to blocking of certain terms on the internet. So, 
um, there were a couple things that happened through social media where people were, were pushing this date and these images forward, um, getting past censor barriers and using kind of coded language, using more subtle depictions of things um, to talk about the incident. And I think that, you know, for somebody who's in my generation, this is the year that that we were born and so there was so much happening in the world that we weren't able to really understand or be a part of until later. And I don't know what the statistics are um, kind of on how many Chinese now have an understanding about Tiananmen Square, but I do know that it's blocked from textbooks and search engines and um, you're not allowed to buy books on the subject. But I think that um, I think that through more kind of artistic and creative ways people are able to talk about these sort of incidents and I think for the younger generation looking back and seeing what happened in history as a precedent seeing what the activists did how they organized what were their you know what were their goals and then how the government reacted and how it's been since then what policies have been enacted I think through looking at these historical models it can give us a really strong motivation and give us a really good opportunity to learn something that can lead us forward into the future so even even though you know, they risked everything to be able to express themselves in this way. Um, and the government cracked down really hard and, you know, murdered hundreds of people. I think that even being able to learn about that now, there's something really powerful about that. That hopefully we'll, we'll be able to take that knowledge into the future and put it to practice on the ground. to give message like uh, from tattoo so you now get the tattoo but in a tattoo way what are you going to do after in the future what, what are you am going I going to do explain? after in the future yeah yeah I think having a tattoo is a really good way to have a conversation with somebody on something that they might not normally be willing to talk about mm. um, so I hope that with every person that I encounter you know maybe there will be some time some moment somewhere where we can have a you know have a discussion Maybe some people, you know, like uh, think uh, sometimes you wear chuba and your husband also Tibetan. So yeah. maybe some people think, oh, she has the Chinese. What if they say something? What are you going to tell? Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't really think that's a problem. Like I think if you, if you're, if you're working toward, you know, toppling a regime, then you need to know as much about it as possible, language, custom, history, everything. So. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it, it gets right to the heart of it. If I were to put the date in English, it wouldn't have the same significance. And I think I can still, you know, wear a chuba and go with my husband to Tibetan things without Tibetans having anything to say about it. <laughs>